The sport of hockey is incredibly physically demanding. I mean, what other sport in the world do you have to fight, hit, endure slashes from a carbon fiber stick? While at the same time, you have to be able to skate, score, defend, and have good enough hockey IQ to process plays while going 40 kilometers per hour on rock hard ice. If you didn't know what hockey was, you think it was invented by an angry nine-year-old. Hockey is a barbarian sport. Bufflin just knocked down three guys at once, and down they go. Full of extremely talented athletes who dedicate their entire life to getting better. So it makes you think, how in the world could a smaller frame player ever exist in this rugged sport? This picture sums it up perfectly. Chara looks like he can eat Nathan Gerby for breakfast. Yet, small players like Gerby not only exist, but they're multiplying. Back in the 1970s, we would see the peak of most players being the same size. Because from 1972 to 1978, we would see the lowest standard deviation in NHL history. AKA, the size difference between players was at its lowest point. So, most players were the same size. And you're probably thinking, why does this even matter? Well, it's because of this man, or this guy. Back in the 1970s, the culture of hockey was a lot different than today. Not only did star players like Bobby Clark lead the league in scoring, but they also had north of 150 penalty minutes. So I guess to give you some perspective, imagine if Connor McDavid and Panarin were still the superstars they are today, but they were getting in full-blown fistfights every second game. This is how the game used to be. Imagine if at any point in a hockey game, a player like Brad Marchand was on the ice. Marchand up to his usual antics. Oh, it is a... It was chaos. Entertaining chaos, but still chaos. And the barbarian culture of the 1970s was so prevalent, it started to favor certain sized players. If you're too tall and lanky, your body wouldn't be able to survive the physical abuse on a nightly basis. If you're too small, well, prayers to you, because every player has 50 pounds on you and is trying to take your head off. Therefore, it was the ones in the middle. Players who were strong and stocky were the ones who succeeded. So unless you were that extraordinary talent, it was almost impossible to exist if you were undersized. You know those guys we see today, and no offense if you are one of them, because I'm not necessarily saying you're wrong. This new school game is for wimps. Too many changes. Today's players are too soft. Well, it's probably because they grew up in this era, where the game of hockey today is literally a different game than it was back then. As not only did the savage playstyle dominate the game, but it also took place when we saw the most expansion in NHL history. Because back in the late 60s and early 70s, the league went from 6 teams to 21. We as fans don't even know how to act when we go from 30 to 31. So imagine the league today going from 30 to 90 teams. It would be bananas. And again, I'm specifically emphasizing this era because it built the foundation of our league today. And more importantly, it set a precedent on what we as fans can expect to see on a night to night basis, which in turn created the hockey culture as it highlighted what made hockey special compared to other major league sports. Vancouver selects from the University of Michigan, Quinn Hughes. That's a small body, gentlemen. That's a small body. Even though the barbarian playing style was most prominent in the 70s, 50 years later, we are still hearing the exact same narrative. And it's systemic from the core. Because from a draft perspective, we have seen countless times where teams won't even consider a player based purely on his size. But in each decade, we would slowly see more and more small players force their way into the NHL. Marcel Dion dominating the NHL, receiving Ted Lindsay awards twice, standing in at five foot seven. Theo Fleury, Martin Saint Louis. Again, before the 2000s, small players who dominated were very rare. Each and every one who persevered, slowly but surely, started to create more doubt and hope for smaller-sized players. Huh? 
maybe we should consider him. He is undersized, but he's got more skill than half our team combined. To give you some perspective, these two players both played in the OHL. One was drafted 6th overall, the other was drafted 39th overall. Can you guess who was drafted 6th overall based off their draft year production? Yeah, and what have they done today? Yeah, many of these small players, if they were even 2 inches taller in some cases, would be considered lottery picks. Because it's not like they're decent middle of the pack players who are just small, no. We have seen countless examples of players who dominated in their draft year just to be brushed aside because they are 5'8 and not the more acceptable 5'10. I mean hey, Cole Caulfield was just passed on by 14 teams. One of the best pure goal scoring prospects we've seen from America in a long time. The man was a goal per game in his draft year. In 2015, a man by the name Benjamin Wendorf would create a very interesting post on a website called Hockey Graphs. Because in the highlighted graphs, it was found that NHL players have actually gotten much bigger. Because in the past couple decades, the average has risen by about 15 pounds in 3 inches. But wait! If the game has gotten smaller and more skill based, how on earth is the average only going up? In the 70s, we would see the NHL peak in terms of everyone being roughly the same size. In the 2010s, the NHL would once again peak, but hold up, it would peak because the NHL would see an influx where more and more players are completely different sizes. Which is why a picture like this can even exist. Yes, we are seeing far more smaller players, but at the same time, we are also seeing freak of nature giants like Quentin Byfield, or perhaps at least Pedersen, who is 6'2", so pretty tall, but was only rumored to be around 165 pounds when he came into the league. Yes, he is tall, but he has a smaller frame than someone like Brendan Gallagher, who is over 5 inches shorter. So then, wh why? What's the answer to all of this? What is still the only factor that is holding back small players from dominating the NHL? Well, it's simple. The barbarian physical side of our game that built the foundation back in the 70s is slowly but surely fading away. Like I've highlighted in previous videos, the amount of fighting has drastically declined in the last couple decades. I mean, even in the last decade, we have seen a 25% decrease. But the question is why? Why all of a sudden did the NHL shift from that gritty game to skill? ...to report that at today's meeting, the NHL Board of Governors unanimously reconfirmed that NHL teams will not play at the expiration of the CBA until we have a new system. In the 2004-2005 season, the NHL would be locked out for a full 82 game season, devastating the hockey world. And after an entire 10 months of negotiations, the ownership group in the NHLPA would finally come to an agreement. And a part of this agreement would also be a series of rule changes. In attempts to increase the natural flow of the game and hopefully increase goal output. Who doesn't like goals? The neutral zone, so the center part of the ice, would be decreased by 4 feet. And in return, it would give the offensive zones more space. Which would indirectly and directly completely change the role of a defenseman. Now we have more space in the offensive zone, so they have more space to walk the line and contribute more offense 5 and 5. And more crucially, expanding the offensive zones increased the ability to set up power plays more efficiently. The dreaded two line pass would be removed, which made it now legal to pass from your team's defensive zone to the offensive blue line. If you got in a fight in the final five minutes, it would result in a game misconduct and a one game suspension. Goalie equipment would get smaller. The shootout would be invented. And so basically, all these rule changes were made to open up the ice, allowing for better flowing offensive rushes. You know all those small players who would have gotten destroyed in the neutral zone a couple years back? Well, they have a lot more room to skate now. And whether it was directly or indirectly, the 2004 lockout would single-handedly create the revolution of smaller frame players. There was 789 fights before the lockout. The next season, there was 466. A dramatic decrease. The most dramatic decrease we've ever seen. And mentioned by Craig Button, Around this time, the 97-98 class of skaters, so McDavid, Mikhail McCars, Quinn Hughes, Elise Pedersen, 
they were all about 7, 8 years old, developing all their fundamentals. So, when the NHL games saw that massive transition to allow for more skill, specifically from the 2015 plus draft range, these players started to be trained completely differently. Which is why today, as more and more players who were born in the late 90s and early 2000s, as they enter the game, we will continue to see everything completely shift. And this transition has led to the death of the power forward, players who can hit, fight, and score big time goals. I mean, I'd probably say the best modern representation of these types of players are the Kachuk brothers. But at the same time, the only reason they're like this is because their dad is one of the best power forwards the game has ever seen. So, with players like Quinn Hughes, who were even mocked on his draft day about his size, are not only proving he can play in the NHL, but he is proving that undersized defensemen can dominate the NHL, while at the same time paving the path for the future generation of players. But there is a caveat. The NHL has also proven that you need to be physically ready in the playoffs, as the past couple Stanley Cup Finals has resulted in bullying their way to a Stanley Cup. So I guess the question is, do you think the NHL will keep trending to allow for more small players, or because the league is starting to become smaller, will physical players start to develop as they will become more valuable? But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was kind of all over the place. I'm still trying to get better with this format, so any feedback would be much appreciated. I'm happy to say we officially hit our 40k goal a couple days ago. So thank you to everyone who has supported me through this crazy year. And if you're new to the channel, and I know many of you are, I actually had a goal of 5,000 subscribers for all of 2020. We hit 40,000. So I've been thinking about it a lot, and my new goal for the new year is 70,000. Let's get it. But cheers on a new year. I hope this one turns out a bit better. I hope you and your families are doing well. See you guys later.